Previously on the Ron Van Dam Show. They've got toods going on. Uh, cream and sugar, Trump, an alien spacecraft. Uh, this stick doesn't even have to go up the ass. The whole hand fits. And now, today's episode. It sounds exciting. I think I'll listen. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Okay, cool. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. Hey, welcome to the program. I am Ron Van Dam. I named the show after me so I'd never forget what the title was. I think I've only got three brain cells left and I've named them. I think there's like a, uh, a a pill you can take that imp- makes your brain function better. I think it's called Prevagen, but uh, don't quote me on that. It's made from an ingredient in jellyfish, which is jelly. And um, yeah, that's a great idea to take a pill that'll improve your memory. I think that's pretty cool. Only I can't really ever remember to take the pill. That's my problem. spring and all the trees are starting to bud and all the flowers are starting to blossom and soon the insects will be out and oh I can't wait I have my property sprayed for mosquitoes there's a lot of mosquitoes uh, where I live So, once a week, a guy pulls up in a truck and he sprays my property to cut down on mosquitoes. And I said to the guy, hey, have you got a spray to cut down on people? (laughs) He didn't laugh. I don't think the mosquito guy got me. You know what I mean? He didn't get me. I was requesting a spray that would keep people away from my house, and he didn't get it, and I felt an immediate disconnect with my planet. Okay, we're going to spend some time together. This should be fun. (laughs) That's a matter of opinion. Relax, come on. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not even in the same room with you, so don't be so intimidated. Just do me a favor. I don't know what's going to happen here. So if you have any small children or chihuahuas, small dogs, get them out of the room because... I just don't know what's going to happen, and I don't want to influence your children. There's no Santa Claus. I I don't want to influence your children in any way, shape, or form. I don't want to be responsible. So if you could just get them out of the room. By the way, why should children be in the same room with you anyway? They should be playing somewhere in a sandbox. Come on, get them out of the room now. This is our time. I've been having trouble sleeping. Yeah, I'm not sleeping very well. I know. I know. And I've tried everything. I've tried 
sleeping, that doesn't work. I've tried going to bed, that doesn't work. I've tried sleeping, that doesn't work. Uh, I've tried uh, eating dinner a little bit earlier, like three in the morning, that doesn't work. Uh, I've cut down on alcohol, maybe. That doesn't work. (laughs) I can't even say it with a straight face. Uh, I've tried things. Uh, I I actually uh, went to Boston about a month ago. I talked about it on the air because I had nothing else to do at the time. I went to Boston to buy some CBD oil. I don't know. I don't know what CBD stands for. I think it's cannabis, cannabis bottled douche. I don't. I don't know what it stands for. But apparently, you apply it to. Uh, you put a few drops under your tongue, and you make a few wishes, and I don't know. They're granted. I. I, I don't know what the oil does. To be honest with you, it it kind of mellows you out without being high. Which is fine. I like that. I like anything that'll mellow me out. I don't like being high. I'm supposed to be high on life. And if I have to externally take something to enjoy life, then that's probably not great. So I buy this bottle of CBD oil and I put a few drops behind my tongue. And I feel pretty good. And, and for the first two nights, I slept like a baby. That's if the baby screams... And has colic because I didn't sleep very well. In other words, uh, the CBD oil didn't work. So then I tried melatonin. That's the stuff that's supposed to make you, you know, a little relaxed and you sleep more peacefully and all that. And I got it in gummy bear form. I don't know what gummy bear is. It, to me, it's just like a you know, it's like a juicy fruits. If if I don't I don't know if you're old enough to know what juicy fruit candy is. They used to sell it in movie theaters, and you would put some in your mouth, and it would stick to your teeth for weeks, and it was the most uncomfortable feeling in the world. You felt like your teeth were rotten right out as you as you observed them rot. It was a horrible candy. Well, so uh, they, this is gummy bears. I don't know gummy bear. I don't know why they're always bears. Why can't it be like gummy sloths? So I did that, and I did sleep very, very well for the first three, four nights. And then my body got used to it. My body actually said to me, Ron, I get what you're trying to do here. My body said to me, Ron, we are determined to make sure that you can't sleep. And to make your life miserable. That's what my body said to me. We recognize that you're taking melatonin from a bottle in gummy bear shape. And uh, we have had enough of this. We no longer will accept the melatonin in your body. And that's what happened. I was taking the, the gummy bear melatonin. And it just wasn't doing anything anymore. Then they came out with a product. Whenever I had a really bad cold or the flu or just wanted to get high, uh, there was NyQuil, which apparently had alcohol in it. I don't know, tequila? I don't know what was in the damn thing. Uh, NyQuil always knocked me out, and I always had a good night's sleep, and I figured I'll do, I'll do the NyQuil. But I don't have a cold. That's probably a bad idea for my system. And then the VIX people who make NyQuil came out with z so what the hell's that? Zequil um, is for people that can't sleep. It gives you that same NyQuil feeling without the medicine. And they say it's entirely safe and non-habit forming. Let me tell you something. If you have an addictive personality, everything is habit forming. <laughs> I mean, and I mean everything. I've never seen anything that's not habit forming. I see, I see people go to the gym every day. Well, today I have to work knees. Then I'm going to work abs. Then I'm going to work the back of my tongue. Then I'm working my ears today. They're obsessed. Uh, is going to the gym addictive? Yeah, for some it is. 
How about people who uh, who just eat incessantly? They're not even hungry, but they eat because they're bored or because it fulfills some portion of their life that never existed before or, or overcomes their sadness or their grief or so they just eat and eat. Who thought that food would be addictive? I mean, it's some, we, we eat, we all eat. For some people, it's addictive. Some people work very hard. They go to work at eight in the morning and they don't come home until eight at night. There isn't a lot to do. They just love to be at work. That's the sickest of all. Yes, they're workaholics. They actually have a name for it. It has nothing to do with alcohol. They kind of got cute with that and said, let's mix alcoholism and working late. Hey, that sounds like fun. We'll call it workaholics. <laughs> it's a thing. So work becomes addictive. I mean, everything's addictive. So don't tell me, Vix Z Quill, that it's non-habit forming. It's habit forming. People will take it every day. Well, then it's safe to take every day. Get off my ass. It's not safe to take every day. Who you can't. Come on. But that stopped working. <laughs> so what was next? Well, in my medicine cabinet, I had a small bottle shh, of Benadryl. Benadryl, that sounds familiar. Yeah, if you have allergies, you can take Benadryl every day. Wow. What does that do? It says on the bottle, don't operate machinery or drive when you're taking Benadryl. <gasps> That's perfect for sleeping. I can't remember the last time I went to bed and also drove heavy uh, machinery. Yeah, I love to fall asleep and then go operate heavy machinery. You can't. So I thought this is a perfect resolve. So I took a Benadryl and I slept wonderfully for two nights. Then my body once again said, I'm on to you, man. I'm on to you. Stop taking stuff. I'm not going to let you sleep anymore. And that's what happened. And then my body said, we're going to make sure you don't sleep by doing this. We are going to make sure that in the middle of the night, we're going to just make your bladder go nuts. Well, what do you mean? You're going to get up every night two or three times to pee. Oh, no, please don't do that to me. Yes, that's what we're going to do to you. You can take all the little gummy bears, all the little Z quills, all the little Benadryls, anything you want, but it ain't going to work, baby. Because even if you fall asleep, we're going to make you pee in the middle of the night. Oh, no, 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 don't do that. We are going to show you who's boss of your body, and it ain't you. Wow. My body's taken over. When I turned 50 years old, Ron, you're 50? You don't look like you're 50. I <laughs> know. Thank you. When I turned 50, all of a sudden, uh, my body took over. My body said, you're not getting away with this shit anymore. No, 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 no. You can do your little teenage, young adult, uh, middle-aged crap all you want. But now we're taking over. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You thought when you were a young adult, you never had to go to the doctor? Well, wait till we start shoving cameras and tubes up your ass every three years. <laughs> the party's over, Van Damme. And it was. My body took over. My body started saying, you know, uh, the body starts deteriorating in your late 20s. Now we're going we're gonna to accelerate this baby. We're going to hit the throttle full. And we're going to start accelerating your stuff really fast. We're going to start with your, uh, with your whole body. Uh, we're we're going to give you creaks. We're going to give you a little arthritis here and there. You're not going to feel as energetic as usual. We're going to take that away from you. We're going to make you pee every three minutes. And most important, we're going to start killing your brain cells to the point where you just won't care what's going on anymore. 
<clears throat> yes, um, a week ago, I went to a pharmacia, and I purchased something that I thought I would never purchase in my whole life. A pill-taking reminder plastic holder thing. I don't know what the technical name for these things are, but it's little plastic. It's a long plastic thing, and it's got seven compartments in it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The fact I could name all the days of the week is even an amazing feat at this point in my life. And you load up the pills every Sunday night into this seven compartment little little plastic thing. And it reminds you every day to take the pills. And if you get up the next day and say, oh my God, yesterday was Tuesday and my pills were still in there. That's because you forgot even to check the pill holder. That's where I am, ladies and gentlemen. Now, fortunately, there's not a lot of pills in that pill holder. I... I <laughs> I have a little time before we start filling up the whole compartment. But still, there are pills in there. And I, I, I went through a whole catharsis when I bought this thing. I never thought I'd have to buy this thing or would even want to. But I did. And when I went up to the register, there was a young kid behind the register. How do you know he was young? He still had pussy pimples. That's a sign of youth, a sign that I miss. And the kid was standing, he probably was like maybe 20 years old, and he was standing behind a register, which is where he's supposed to stand. And he says, uh, did you find everything you were looking for? And uh, I got lazy and I said, yes. Usually I go through a whole comedy routine. Well, I'm looking for the meaning of life. What is that, aisle three, kid? <laughs> I didn't find it there. Uh, but I knew that I'm beyond that now. I don't have time for that crap anymore. So I said, yes, I found what I was looking for, and here it is. And I plopped down on the counter this plastic pill holder with the seven days of the week in it. And he looked up at me, and I looked at him. And I said to him, uh, just shut up and ring it up, will you, please? And he did. And I walked out with my plastic pill holder and a receipt that was about three miles long for discounts on products that I don't buy. CVS, man, they play with your mind something fierce. They give you tons of coupons every time you buy something. And it's for stuff you don't buy. For the most part. The stuff that you do buy, you just bought. <laughs> it's like you buy the pillbox reminder. You pay for it. They give you a receipt with a lot of coupons on it. One of the coupons is 25% off plastic pill holders. Oh, you fuckers. <laughs> Do I have the energy to come back the next day, return the pill holder, then go back to the pill holder area, pick up another pill holder, walk up to the desk with my 25% off coupon? Do I have time to do that kind of stuff? Unfortunately, yes, I do. <laughs> It's just CVS. Why are you making me go through this exercise? You just gave me the receipt. Let me give you the coupon. Let's just take the money off right now. Why play games? Yes, I do have the time to come back tomorrow. We can save ourselves a lot of time, you and I. I don't have to drive back here and waste gas. You don't have to put more of that pimple cream on your face. I think it's a it's it's a win win, but no, you can't do that. It says right on the coupon you have to do it after the date that you bought this thing that you just bought. Man, life, life just isn't simple enough, and I don't know how to make it more difficult. Ay, 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 ay. We've got a great guest today. Uh, uh, we're talking Greek, uh, which is Greek to me. That's the name of the book. 
It's uh, a woman who has uh, traveled a lot and just fell in love with Greece. She's not even Greek. How does that happen? I don't know, but we're going to find out uh, right after these uh, messages. The Ron Van Dam Show is intended for mature audiences. Oh, so that's what ironic means. Yes, honey. Yes, it does. First, they put jalapenos on your hamburger, but that wasn't hot enough. Then came habaneros, but still, that wasn't hot enough. Next came the ghost pepper, and still, that was not hot enough for you. Well, buckle up, tough guy, because Burger Guy thinks you're not man enough to handle the heat of our new sweet flaming mother of heaven. What the f*** did you assholes do to my hamburger burger? Featuring two of Burger Guy's signature paper-thin patties topped with an experimental hot sauce made from a concentrated hot pepper extract that has only been approved for military use by North Korea. This burger will burn a hole through every inch of your intestines and then slap your mama on its way out for good measure. This burger is so hot they wouldn't let us test it on prisoners. Death Row Prisoners. But for a limited time, you can try your luck at your local burger guy, if you're not a complete pussy. All purchases of the sweet flaming mother of heaven, what the f*** did you assholes do to my hamburger burger, must be pre-approved by a certified attorney at law, with proper notification of next of kin. Sweet flaming mother of heaven, what the f*** did you assholes do to my hamburger burger, must not be consumed within 500 yards of schools, or within 1,000 yards of open flame. All burger guy franchisees reserve the right to ignore cries for mercy or requests for immediate medical attention. Mary Norris joins us now. She's uh, an author. It's her second book, and she's been with The New Yorker, and she's been in the business for uh, actually more than 30 years, I understand. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I started at The New Yorker in 1978. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> what, on being old? <laughs> no, on being on having such a fruitful career, Mary. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> being thank you. old. I've been in radio for 30 years. I guess I'm as old as you. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um, interesting book. Uh, this is uh, Greek to me. And it's, as I understand, it's, it's fun. You've gotten some really great reviews here, which you should by now since you've been in the business for so long. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fun book. Uh, it's about... Uh, exploring the the Greek culture, and then also there's more involved, isn't there? You get into the the culture, the language, the whole thing. Yes, the book is kind of hard to sum up. I find, even <laughs> though I wrote it, I'm finding it hard to sum up. It's part travelogue, uh -huh. part memoir, and part essay, really about being um, passionate about Greek. Yeah. So it's about the language, and it's about travel. And it's a lot of, you know, language learning is making mistakes. So there's a lot of yeah. humor in it, too, I like to think. <laughs> well, the, the, yes. Um, are, are you indeed Greek? No, I have no Greek blood at all. I'm Irish, huh. but I think of the Irish as the Greeks of the North. Okay. Now, so so, what drove you in this direction to write this book? Was there some incident in your life or something that triggered you to do this? Well, when I was writing the first book, the one about punctuation and pencil, yes. I was invited on a press trip to Greece. I started studying Greek and traveling in Greece. I started with modern Greek to travel in the country. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd been there at this point. It was 2012, and I had been to Greece six times. And when I was offered this press trip to Greece, I was supposed to be 
staying at home working on the grammar book. Uh But I couldn't resist. I went off to Greece. And to make up for it, I wrote a little about Greece every day while I was there. I wrote about Greek, hoping to sneak it into the book on English. Uh Uh, But my editor cut all that stuff. Uh (laughs) Um, But he remembered when it was time to write a second book, he Mm. remembered that we had this little pile of Greek clips and asked if I wanted to write a book about Greek. It turned out that a lot of the stuff that I'd already written did not make it into the new book, but I had piles of uh, Greek notes and, and anecdotes, and, and I did a lot of additional research at that point uh-huh. on, say, Homer. So that's how it came together. Interesting, interesting. You kind of had it all there in front of you, and you just had to assemble it accordingly and update it, I guess. Yes, and I felt so lucky because I'd written things about traveling in Greece back in the 80s, yeah. about a long trip to Cyprus mm-hmm. and uh, uh, walking the sacred way between Athens and Elefsina. Yeah. And I had tried to get that stuff published back in the 80s and failed. So it was wonderful to have it revived and get it into print in a different version. That's great. Um, I, I want to talk about, well, your first book is Between You and Me, uh, Confessions of a Comma Queen. And let me tell you, first of all, brilliant title. Secondly, um, I always have fun with, with language. I think it's interesting how we communicate and then we say things to each other. And we don't even understand where it came from, why we even said it. It's just because other people say it. Um, uh-huh. v- very, very interesting subject matter, I think. Yes. And especially, I, I think you must feel it being in radio oh, yes. and using, you know, oral history and things like that. that and if you're in radio and you're, and you're always listening to people talk and talking yourself, that's yeah. like the cutting edge, isn't it? It, it, it is. It's, it, I, I don't really hear what they're saying. I hear the way that they're saying it and, and, the, uh-huh. and the phrases that they're using. And it's, it's, that's kind of more interesting. It's like, it's like the brain's overworking and it's not supposed to do that. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, but it's good to be conscious of all that stuff. It kind of is, and and the Greek language kind of has uh, infiltrated all languages as well. Yes, it's one of the earliest influences mm-hmm. on all languages. You know, the alphabet is our the English alphabet is adapted originally. Well, it's adapted from the Roman alphabet, uh-huh. but that came from the Greek alphabet. It's our ancestral alphabet. And if you're a nerdy person about language at all, you've got to love the alphabet. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting. All right. Uh, the, the Greek culture, um, I, I know that that has, that has really interested you uh, over the years. And you, as you said, you've been there so many times. But I understand that you, uh, you, you found a, a role model in women out of that culture. Yes, I found that mythology is, you know, I mean, it's it, it's not outdated at all. Right. Mythology is really relevant. Mm-hmm. There is nothing new under the sun. And if you get into any kind, any situation that might seem really unique and personal, mm-hmm. there is some equivalent to it in Greek mythology. Mm-hmm. And what I found when I was looking for models of behavior, you know, I mean, I was a product of the 50s and 60s. My mother was a Mm stay-at-home housewife. I was raised by nuns. So it didn't look like there were many possibilities. Um, I was able to find, I got out of Cleveland, Ohio, and came east. And when I discovered mythology, when I took a course in college, Mm. there were all kinds of different women or female figures yes. that you could model yourself after. Everything from the Medusa yeah. into um, Athena. And it, it is Athena that I fell for, that mm. I found the mm. best model. Interesting. And I she's ne- independent. <laughs> yeah, I never looked at, at it that way, but you're right. These All these uh, mythological gods and figures were were figures of power. Um, that's very true. And, and women as well. And of course, in our culture it was a long time before we recognized that. And it's, it's interesting. I never thought. Yeah. And those gods are so interesting too, because they have flaws. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. You know, Hephaestus, one of the gods, was lame. And I think he's an example of compensating for your deficiencies. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Because he was a great blacksmith and jeweler, you know. Yeah. He used his upper body strength. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there were quite a few examples of that. There's no question about that. Um, are you, do you, do you still go to Greece on a regular basis? I have been there every couple of years mm-hmm. and I am hoping, and I got a little worn out writing this book and uh-huh. thinking, um, I, you know, when I was done writing about Greece, I wanted to go on a vacation somewhere and where did I want to go? Yeah, I wanted to go yeah, back yeah. to Greece. Yeah. I have, I've had a few invitations since the book came out, which mm-hmm. is nice. Um, people, uh, somebody who runs a hotel on one of the islands, somebody who owns a house in mm-hmm. another island, and I may put all these together and take a trip. Yeah. Yes. The book is is interesting in the sense that it, it is kind of everything. It is. Uh, it kind of just touches. It's like they 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 let you loose in a room and you just started <laughs> touching all the walls all of a sudden. It's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting in that You way. know, it's not easy to write a book that's about everything. No, there isn't. <laughs> well, unless they let you loose, and apparently they did. So that's uh, when you go to Greece and you get off the plane, do they go, oh, God, it's Mary. Oh, no. They don't do that, do they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm 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 very, I'm blissfully anonymous. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, fine. All right. Uh the book is available everywhere, I understand. Yes. You can get it through one of the big retailers or the independent bookstores, which you have a lot of in your area. Yes. And I have a, a website, comaqueen.net, and there are links there to um places i'm going to be visiting and also to places where you can buy the book perfect the book is called greek to me you can find it everywhere i understand you live in new york city now i do yes yeah. i'm in seattle right now uh-huh. on, uh, the almost near the end of the u.s book tour nice and then i'm going on to australia and new zealand oh and God. then on to england my, they can't they cannot harness you apparently <laughs> <laughs> i guess not i am filled with the Spirit of Athena. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, she's Mary Norris, and she, the book is Greek to me. And uh, her first book, uh, Between You and Me, Confessions of a Comma Queen, is kind of a classic in itself. Thank you so much oh. for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Wonderful to talk to you. Okay. You take care. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it, baby. <laughs> We're, uh, there you have it, baby. We're out of time for today, <laughs> but I'll be back. Uh, next time there's a weekday that rolls around, I'll be here with a brand new show. I hope you can join me. I really do, because it's not that I'm going to miss you or anything. It's just that um, that's how I get paid. So, you know what I'm saying? 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 You've been very patient with me, and I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, where's my pillbox? I wish you peace. Peace.